know, it's interesting to note that, that Paul never made any mention of the Parthenon uh, in his travels. There's no mention of scripture of his having written a letter to the Athenians uh, or have, have established a church uh, in Athens. But he did make a powerful, powerful presentation of the gospel here, which still resonates through the years. Anyway, the Parthenon was you know, over half a millennia old by the time Paul got here, yet he just sort of ignored it. It made no difference to the gospel message that he was bringing to the people. But he went to the forum, to the Agora, where business was conducted with, among the people who, who visited, who traversed, who traveled through <laughs> Athens on their way to various parts of the, of the uh, Roman world. And he bypassed the, the sort of the centers of worship in that day, the Temple of Artemis, the Temple of uh, Diana, as well as the Parthenon. He just ignored them completely. And what he focused on was that one statue, that one monument to the unknown God. And that's the God whose message he was bringing to the people of Athens. This is the Agora. This is where Paul came to proclaim the gospel. This was the meeting place, the commercial uh, center of Athens at the time. And it was also the place where people came to exchange news and gossip. At the top of that hill behind me is the Parthenon. But it wasn't the Parthenon, that, that seat of power, that Paul went to. It was the seat of commercial power, because this is where news was disseminated from. This is where people got their ears tickled, as Paul liked to say. They wanted to come here to hear the latest news from the far-flung reaches of the empire, of the Roman Empire. And this is where they came for it. There were, along these colonnades, on either side, there were shops. Uh, set up and these were people who would sell their wares here. Maybe Paul even sold some of his leftover tents. I don't know how he made his living, but uh, it's, it's really interesting that people came here to listen to him and to hear what he had to say and they listened respectfully. They gave him an audience and then they would challenge him on what he said. But you, you remember that as he was making his way into Athens, and he, there were statues to all these gods in every different direction. Everywhere he looked as he was walking along, he saw these statues to various gods. And he came upon one statue. Hey, you know, he was thinking, about how, am I, how am I going to address this population that is so outwardly religious? I mean, they worship everything. They worship trees, rocks, flowers, everything. How am I going to speak to these people? Then he came upon this statue, this monument to an unknown god, and, and that was his inspiration, because that is the god that he was preaching to the Athenians, the god they didn't know, the unknown god. It's humbling to stand here where Paul stood, and to read his words, the words that he proclaimed to the Athenians in the marketplace. But they're recorded right here. And we know exactly what he said. And we know what their response was. So let me read what Paul said. And these very pillars and these very stones echoed with the sounds of Paul's voice when he spoke. And he stood up in the meeting and said, People of Athens, I see that in every way you are a very religious people. For as I walked around and looked carefully at your places of worship and your objects of worship, I even found this, a, an inscription and an altar to an unknown God. So the, you are ignorant of the very thing that you worship. And this is what I'm going to proclaim to you today. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not need to live in temples built by human hands. He's not served by human hands 
as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everything life, gives everything form and breath and everything else. From one man he made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole world. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him. Though he is not far from any one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone or anything made by human design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by a man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. Now can you imagine that the response of the people who were listening to him, and they were listening very attentively, and, and they heard that he was talking about raising people from the dead. Some of them sneered. I mean, you can imagine is proclaiming this message to a crowd this, today. If you said that you knew somebody who had been raised from the dead, well, people would say, yeah, right. <laughs> but others said, we want to hear more about this subject from you. At that, Paul left the council and we don't know what happened then maybe he did come back and clarify his message and expand upon his expand upon his message we don't know but we do know that some of the people that heard him that day became followers of Paul became Christians did they establish a church here in Athens there's no record of it we don't know however churches here abound now and there were churches on this site and so maybe maybe they did or at least maybe they formed a house church because there were some who were named uh, Dionysius who was, was one of the leading lights in the commercial realm in uh, Athens uh, and also a woman named Damaris and a number of others so I assume that Paul just didn't you know pull up his tent pegs and leave I, he must have he must have discipled them and I'm sure he did it's just that we don't have any mention of it. It's interesting, there's not a letter, a letter to the Athenians. But uh, we can only suppose that that's a part of Christian history that's just missing. I bet it was a fascinating one. But it's amazing that Paul came here and he spoke to the seat of commercial power. And he did so unflinchingly and undauntingly. And some at least heard. And perhaps they were among those who changed the world. We don't know.